Welcome back to another episode of Right Here in Mass. Today's guest is Greg Cohen, the founder and president of Campus Bound, a company of former and current admissions officers and college counselors who support hundreds of students each year with finding, applying, and paying for college. He has personally supported thousands of families through the financial aid process and helping them to maximize their scholarships and grants. Greg has also recently launched a nonprofit organization called College Affordable that brings equity to the financial aid process by providing professional support to this complicated system. Greg, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Please share more about you and what you do with our audience. So um, Campus Bound is, is the company I started over 20 years ago now, and what we do is we work with students step by step through the crazy college admissions process and the financial aid process. So helping them to figure out what they want in a college, uh, what college are good fits for them academically and socially and financially, and really being thorough about their search. And then every step of the application process, which um, you know involves essays and applications and, and resumes and interviews, and really make sure the students are doing everything they need to do on time, doing it well. And showing their best to the colleges. Um, and so we've got a team of about 45 counselors that were former admissions officers and guidance counselors and financial aid officers that are really live and breathe this uh, every day. So it's a very gratifying thing to help these students through that, as well as, as you mentioned, helping them to make it less expensive. Absolutely. And I know that your mom had previously started a a prior company that I think was quite similar to Campus Found um, a few decades ago and that you ended up joining it. So what inspired you to get into the industry and join the family business, but then also make something of your own out of it? Yeah, it was, it's it's actually a great story. You know, it's my mother was, out of, we grew up in Whitman, um, small town on the, I say South Shore, but it's kind of South-ish shore. And, um, and she had a a little started with myself and my sister started helping kids with the college application process she has an education or had an educational background and and uh, she was doing it for about 20 years or so or not quite maybe 15 years or so and I was just finishing up my MBA from Babson and was had the financial thing and the entrepreneurial bug and and uh, I saw what she was doing and she was turning clients away and she was doing it very casually and I thought to myself wow there if this was done professionally with marketing and with good operations and bringing some experts, we could probably grow this thing. And so it went from her little um, study office in, in Whitman uh, to in 2003, 2001, I started getting involved with it as I was finishing up my MBA and as I was working in a different sector. And I started to get into it, learn the financial aid world. And then we formally launched the business in 2003 and to really start to be able to we opened up an office in Quincy. We hired a uh, the former director of guidance from Hingham High School at the time, um, and then slowly but surely we we grew we got the, from the Quincy office to the Lexington office to other locations in the area, um, and built up a great team of folks and essay experts, and really been able to build it up. So it was it all started in um, you know my mother's goal of really being able to help people in a with this crazy process, which we thought was crazy back then, and now it's even crazier and more expensive than I could have ever imagined back then. But um, it was all based on that and being able to work with her for a few years. And, 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 and uh, she was a, she was cheap labor. She, once I took it over, she, <laughs> you know, she didn't charge me much for her, uh, her, her, her great work. So. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's wonderful that, as you mentioned, you've recruited people from college admissions or high school guidance counselors to become a part of the campus bound team. And so what was that process like of being able to find these professionals and experts to join the company and therefore help to grow it to what it is today? Yeah. And we've got you know, over the years, we've just had so many great people that just, especially on the college admission side of things in the college church that they, their hearts in the right place. They they really want to be able to make a difference in these young people's lives. This with the the stress that they face, the, the the challenging process, the pressures, to really be able to help them and 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 know all the great opportunities that are out there and this in that exist. So, you know, in terms of finding good people, sometimes it was people that were retiring and they had spent their career there and they wanted to be able to um, continue to have their hand in the this this world. Other times it was people that were looking for a second job. And they were college ad admissions officers that, uh, you know, were looking to pick up a couple extra dollars or guidance counselors. 
or it could be people that were in that space for a while and were transitioning. You know, we have a lot of uh, people that worked in the college admissions space for several years. It's a very uh, difficult field in terms of the commitment that you're traveling all the time and they wanted to maybe change their lifestyle. So we were able to build up a great team of part-time folks that you know were able to have a very flexible job and work with anywhere from five to 20 kids and but really be able to dedicate to those kids and get to know those students. And so many times for these folks that were on the high school side, they had to work with hundreds and hundreds of students at an extremely fast pace with all kinds of area responsibility. And their favorite part of the job was helping these kids with the college process. And so they can really now dedicate and, and dig in on that piece of it. And so that would became a very attractive um, thing for them to be able to do. Yeah. And, and like you said, be able to especially have a second job too. That's one thing that I've noticed just from looking at Campus Bound's website is that sometimes it looks like some of your staff is able to have two careers, which, are, which is really nice to kind of pursue multiple passions. And, and the, the nature of the job is such that a lot of flexibility with it. You know, if you want to see, have a small caseload or a bigger caseload, if you want to do all your meetings on the weekends or at nights, uh, it's all doable. And so you know, it was a nice way to have a, a side job if, you know, if that's what you're looking for. Um, some people with their primary income um, and that works out for them as well. Yeah, which is nice just having that flexibility. And right now Campus Bound is centralized in Needham, but I know at one point you did have a handful of offices in various locations across the state. So what was your process for choosing which locations you wanted to have offices in and the people you wanted to serve? Yeah, it was a really you know interesting evolving process there. So I started in Quincy, um, my original office was in Quincy, and it was because I was from the, I was from Whitman, and uh, we had a lot of network and a lot of the existing clients that my mother had had were from the Route Three towns like Hingham and Norwell, as well as like the Sharon, Easton, uh, Stoughton areas, and so that that Quincy was a a particular area that was where we had a good base, and there wasn't a lot of competition there at the time. Um, we then opened up in Lexington um, in 2006, and that served a market of communities that like Lexington and Wayland and, and some of the, the nicer suburbs around the greater Boston area. Um, eventually, we opened in Mansfield. We got rid of Quincy um, and we in Hingham. Um, so we were in, in those two towns for, for a while before opening up Needham in about seven or eight years ago. Um, and then over time, and so those all offices want we needed to be near the students so it was a hard thing for families to be able to, at that point they were all coming to the office um and so we wanted to be have small offices located in key geographic areas that could pull from some of the communities that were had a strong college going population um Nita became one of our bigger offices um but then over time well what happened was COVID happened right mm -hmm. and we realized and people even though we could have done and we did do some remote work before COVID, people really gravitated towards it, both from the families that didn't have to fight traffic and drop their, you know, their kid off and and things like that during the time, but also for our counseling team that appreciated the flexibility. So it's been something where even now, 98% of our students work remotely, even the ones that live in the town that we are in and need them. And we have a couple of satellite locations and on still on the South Shore and in um, Burlington, but that's very free, infrequently used. Um, so mm -hmm. all the services are remote now. Uh, we work with students from all over the state as well as in different parts of the country. Which is so nice. So COVID because... had a, for us, it was, the, the you know, I think it was interesting in that fact that the mindset changed about remote work. Mm -hmm. uh, people felt like their son or daughter needed to be in person before to have, be able to focus. And then they realized over those last couple of years that it was more productive to be remote um, and, and more Absolutely. efficient uh, with, with it things. And so it's, um, it's made us become a much more um, national business. Right. And with that, um, the pandemic, did you find that there was an increase in students and families who are looking for services that Campus Bound offers because of the fact that they weren't necessarily in, in a school to be able to get that support that they need during the college application process? Yeah, COVID did a few different things to our industry. And, and one was, you know, the support was a little bit harder from traditional sources like, like the high schools, which generally are over taxed and can't get into it that much anyways. But then the other 
you know, hurdles that these students had to face, whereas they couldn't do college visits. So how could they learn about the schools? Um, they had their extracurricular activities were broken up. And how could you tell the story about what you've done outside of school was harder to do. And then the landscape in terms of the college, SATs became optional. And that threw a big wrench in how students applied to college. Uh, financial aid and people's disrupted uh, incomes uh, during that time and, and uneven incomes and what the impact on that was. So there was a lot of things that were going on during that time that made this process even harder and more confusing and, and, and families feeling, I need to get some help. Mm. Yeah. And so Campus Bound was able to step in and be a really great organization of support for people in that situation who were feeling really overwhelmed with everything that was going on. Right. And, and still to this day, even though things have calmed down, the challenges still exist for families. I mean, it's, it's, for, you know, for me, I always talk about it now. When I started the business, I was closer to the student's age than I am now. I'm, I have two children in college. And so I can talk, I can say when I was a kid and, you know, the parents can really resonate with that, but it's, it's, there's definitely, it's changed a lot. And um, the pressures on the students have changed a lot. Uh, and the support that's available to them has changed a lot. And so being able to be there for, for those families is really gratifying. I mean, all of our counselors love it. All of our team loves it when you can really see a student not only get the acceptances, but go through that process with less stress and, and, and take the uncertainty out of it that can really come. Um, it, you know, it's a very gratifying business to be in. Absolutely. And something you've mentioned a few times is the fact that so many things have changed throughout the years, uh, throughout the college application process. And something that Campus Bound does frequently is get involved in different educational opportunities to learn about these changes and how they can be able to bring those back to the students and families that they work with. So I'd love to hear more about how you incorporate that into your overall organization with making sure to serve clients in terms of students and families, but also pursue those almost like career development opportunities and just continue to learn. Yeah, I mean, both for the counseling team, but also we do a lot for the families. We, you know, we realize that um, in, in presenting ourselves, it's really important to be educators. Um, ultimately, at the bottom of our hearts, all of us on the team are educators. And that's why we got into this field. And this is what we do. And so we do regular webinars. Um, so every month we're doing a webinar. It's trying to be pretty much every month timely to what's going on and what a junior or senior in high school may be having to think about. We do um, blogs. We have a blog on our website that's updated pretty much weekly or every other week. Um, range of topics, really try to make it a digestible way for people to learn a, a tidbit. There's so much information out there for families and it's overwhelming. And we like to be that trusted source um, mm -hmm. that people can say, I'm hearing this from my friend and you know, is this true or or not? You know, people can call us. We also have uh, our social media sites. Um, for a while, we have this uh, a, a site called College Knowledge. It's on the Facebook, which is for people can ask their questions because it's very personalized. So we try to provide qualified information out there so people can follow us on. If you find us on social media, get on our newsletter list. You're getting good content. We feel like um, it. It really it deciphers some of the crazy information that's out there uh, because you can ask, read three articles here from three different friends. And of course, being the college landscape too, everybody knows everything, right? You know, you, oh, my son who graduated high school 15 years ago told me <laughs> he did this and that's why he got into the school and you should do it too. Or I went to this college 30 years ago and, you know, I think you should apply here. There's so much of that that goes on. Your friends, your peers, their peers, are just flooding them with information. And so to be that source of truth, either in the information that we present out there on the on online or when our clients are, are being able to come to us uh, with their questions, I think people really get a lot out of. Absolutely, especially because of the fact that the knowledge and advice you're providing is customized to the client and the person that you're working with, just like with financial advice, as an example, I mean, anything you read online is often very generalized or not catered to a person's specific situation. And so that's something you're able to do is kind of meet a family where they are and understand what their situation is and what their needs are, and then be able to provide that customized advice from there. It's, it really is a personalized 
thing, you know, you students are different academic levels, different levels of interest, different career potential, in, you know, what they might be pursuing on the financial side. There's people that are wealthy or middle income that are just trying to make sure that are, they are being efficient to lower income families that are trying to figure out how to get as much financial aid as possible. Everybody's different, different challenges. And, and just before these, you know, we're recording this, we found that I had two calls. One was a, a, a family that was a, didn't qualify for financial aid, but we're trying to figure out how to spend the, the money that they did have and how to best effectively spread that out. Another one that I just spoke with was trying to figure out they had some changing financial circumstances. The, the, the mother's income was going lower and how could they talk to the college about that? Two very different situations that needed a different approach and a different set of questions. It's not cookie cutter when it comes to your personal situation and your personal information. And that's why we make this whole process a very one-to-one -one kind of thing. Absolutely. And with all of the team members that you have now, I believe it's up to 45. How do you manage all of them all and also kind of focus on your role within the organization as well? Yeah, I'm pretty lucky to have a great team, um, you know, and uh, my uh, my the person that sort of helps me to manage all the operational aspect has been with me since 2006 and she's great and everybody will really really lean on her there's a lot of collaboration within the team we have little subcommittees um working groups collaboration groups um so we have a training committee so people can reach out within the group so people lean on each other a lot mm -hmm. uh and i feel very confident that they're getting good advice so i don't have to be teaching every counselor, these counselors are coming with experiences, um, but they're also being able to lean on their peers um, and be able to, uh, you know, get that advice when they confront a difficult situation. Um, and so building an infrastructure, building a team has allowed us to do a better job for our families and our families to get a better outcome. Uh, a lot of our competition is one person shops. And you're getting with, with, with Campus Bound, you're getting a team. You may have one person that's going to be your direct coach, if you will, but they're leaning on the others and collaborating. And whether it's on Slack or on phone conversations or roundtable Zoom meetings, there's a lot of that that's going on that gives our team a lot of confidence in what they're putting out there because situations will come flying at them. Um, and you know, they need to be able to lean on them because it's, uh, you never know what's going to come across your desk in terms of a student's needs. Right. And it, I think it's just awesome to have almost 50 people who have all different experiences and situations that they've worked in who can relay that information to others and be there for support. One, one of the things when I started the business, I, you know, I really thought long and hard about, do I want the team to be folks that were on the college admission side of the desks or coming from the the, the the high school side, private and public high schools. And ultimately we settled on a mix. Mm -hmm. And that's been so powerful because they bring different experiences to the table that are all, inter, you know, and if you're needing someone to, what schools, I don't know what I want to study or I, I don't know what schools to offer it. That high school person is going to have a lot of great perspective on that. On the, I don't know how to make my application look great, uh, you know, and make it so that it stands out. Well, that person that was reading the application is really going to have some great perspective on that. And we have essay experts on the team, financial aid experts on the team, folks that have a lot of skill in athletic recruiting process or um, the arts, uh, different particular majors, highly selective schools. So people are leaning on each other all the time to, to, to bring the best uh, information and support to the, to the student. You know, so it works Absolutely. out well. Absolutely. Yeah, especially with the financial aid piece, because that is huge where it's if you don't know, if you just simply don't know the process or if you don't know of opportunities that are available to you, that could potentially lead to missing out on tens of thousands of dollars that can support your college education. It, it is such a and you you hearing stories a lot a few years ago and it's finally about to roll out in the fall. They're changing the main financial aid application business. It's, it's too complicated and we'll see how mm -hmm. it comes out. It's coming out in at the end of the year. But the whole process, and it's a very delicate conversation uh, because you've got a lot of money at stake and you want to do the most for your child and you want them to have those opportunities, but there's a cost that comes to it. But there's a tremendous amount of way to reduce the cost. But just like an accountant's going to know how to you know, best 
position you from a tax standpoint or a, a specialist in any kind of a field is going to know and be able to provide you the advice on that. A lawyer or a doctor is going to know the intricacies of that process. It's good to have someone that knows it because for most families, this is the first time they're going through that, right? You're about to launch your student off to college. And then you could be potentially seeing a bill of $85,000 a year at some of these colleges. And so getting somebody to take a look at that, making sure you're doing that process right, that you've thought about it and how you're going to pay for it, there's opportunities to make it less expensive. Most students don't pay that full amount, but if you can you know, figure out based on your particular situation what the opportunities might be, merit scholarships or need-based aid or lo better loans, you can save yourself a lot of money. Um, and I love doing that. You can see I get kind of jazzed <laughs> up about doing that. And that's something I've been doing for over 20 years. Was when I do an appeal letter and all of a sudden the student gets another $10,000 per year and I save them $40,000, it gets me excited. Yes. Um, and I, and that story is, you know, I've seen it many times. We've had a student recently, her, um, she was also to go to at a very expensive college and the father lost his job suddenly. And she was committed to the school and we went back, we made a case and the student, they changed the, the application the, and factored in the future income and their, inc and their financial aid award went up by $50,000 for next year. Oh my gosh. So $50,000, I mean, that's life-changing. That would have been debt. That would have been deferred retirement that would have cost, been much more costly in a ripple effect. Um, and that's just one of the things that we see where you can figure out, oh yeah, what about letting the school know about this or that? And this is how to write that letter. And this is how to communicate that. And it's, um, and there's many different little tentacles to this whole process that to keep track of. And so um, mm -hmm. being that resource in the room is um, a big part of what we do. Yes, families. absolutely. I can imagine it's really gratifying to have situations like that come to fruition where you're able to help families save lots of money. Um, which makes me think of something that is a really hot topic right now, which is um, the possibility of forgiving student loans. And so is that something that your families and clients bring to you or kind of ask about in conversation and how that might affect colleges that their uh, students or children are applying to? Yeah, I mean, it's obviously been in the news a lot lately with uh, the, you know, the government loans and and uh, the Biden had tried to, you know, give some relief. He's still trying to. But that's a big unknown, um, mm -hmm. what's going to happen there. There are loan forgiveness programs that are out there, but they're in place that I do get co have conversations about. One of the things I like to talk about is let's try to avoid it in the first place. So if you've got a, mm -hmm. a high school student, what measures can you do through your school selection, through the financial aid process, through the scholarships, through the finding more affordable loans and the best way to pay for college? What can you do? to make it so it's less expensive and avoid the loans in the first place. Because we don't know what the government's going to do, you know, right. especially four or five, 10 years out when it may be time for your student to be paying those loans down. So we try to say, what can we do if you're going in? And then if you are, you know, if you are coming to us and you have the loans, let's think, are there a way to refinance those? Are there ways to, you know, what can we count on the government to be able to do to, to get some relief for that? Um, and so we can look at some of that, but our goal is, Let's try to avoid it in the first place. I love that approach, kind of taking a proactive, ultimately, approach to working with your students and finding the right fit for them overall. Right, right. And, and that's it. You know, we talk about it's a fit academically and socially and geographically and financially. And let's spend the time up front thinking about what are your criteria? Mm -hmm. What's important to you? And then we can use our expertise, our data, our information to figure out what places, what ways we can make those a reality. Um, and because we're in this living in this space, you know, we, we, we have the experiences that we have that, that allow us to be able to provide those kind of insights. Absolutely. And a lot of what your team does too, is meet with different colleges and universities across the country to understand either the university as a whole, or maybe a specific school within the university. So what has that process been like of building relationships with those schools and then relaying the information that you learn from them back to your clients? Yeah, this is something we've been doing for a long time and we have to stay on top of it, right? This is our business. 
to be knowledgeable about the schools. And it's a very changing environment, both from a admissibility standpoint, but what also what these schools have to offer mm. and and in financial aid and how they do financial aid. And so we do regular interviews uh, every year with uh, admissions officers and financial aid officers from the schools that we are um, uh, talking to. So we put out these information we put out you talked about before about the some of the content that we put out there and we have these college candidates on our website which are little tidbits about the school like tell us in you know from the admissions officer what do you think is important in a college application or makes good makes good for a good college essay or tell us a little bit about your school and we're putting that out there but we're also getting a lot of information that doesn't make it out there that we're interviewing them give us the real information about what's going on at your college so we do regular interviews with admissions offices, besides going to the college events and conferences where we're able to network with some of these folks, industry industry conferences and uh, getting information that's online. And I think a lot of what's hard for, it makes this process really hard for a family going into it is that the colleges are really good at marketing. And so they're publicly putting out there a really nice face. What we're trying to do is let's get the real story. And, and by asking these really pointed questions, to the college admissions officers at these colleges, we get, and, and also talking to our former students who are going there or former parents that are going to these colleges, we really assemble a lot of information and database that we share amongst ourselves that we that information is then available for you. But it, it's part of what we do, especially in our off season when it's a little bit less busy, we're doing a lot of information gathering. So we're prepared every year because it's a changing environment and, and the schools are changing every year. Yeah, and I think that's a, yeah, yeah, and I think that's a great approach, not only for the families and students that you work with, but also for the universities themselves, where they might think Campus Bound potentially has clients that they're working with who might want to come to our university. So I feel like it's mutually beneficial for both your team and also the university you're speaking with. That's, that's absolutely the case. They're happy to talk to us mm -hmm. because they know that we have the ear of the students and they are trying to recruit students. They want to get applications. Um, and so if a student is looking to, I don't know where to apply, or what do you think about this school for me, or looking for a recommendation, you know, they're, so we're an intermediary to, for them to reach their market, uh, which is the students. Um, so they definitely like to talk to us, and, and um, it's a good collaborative uh, kind of relationship. They want students also that are good fits for them. You know, if, if a student is genuinely a good match, they want that student because that student will be successful mm -hmm. at their college. So it's a win for them to get the application, but also to get the student that might be a really good fit that will be there, will be successful, which is what they want. Absolutely. And yeah. another way that you support students who are going through this process, which we mentioned at the beginning of the show, is through the nonprofit you recently launched called College Affordable. And so I'd love if you could share with our listeners what that organization does and also what inspired you to start it. Yeah, I mean, it's this has become a real passion for me. Um, so as, as I mentioned before, I've been doing the financial aid help for a long time. And, um, you know, what has been the case is that you see that this process has become more and more confusing. And we, the, the whole genesis of it was I was, I helped a friend of mine. Um, and this friend of mine came to me, he, his oldest was about to go off to college. He got his financial aid award. He said, what loan should I take? And I said to him, hold on a second. Let's look at your financial aid award. Let's look at your information. And we appealed the financial aid award. And we went back to the school and it took a couple of, it was five different schools we appealed to. Ultimately, the schools offered more money and he and his son ended up a school that increased their award by $25,000, Wow! which will ultimately be $100,000 over four years. And he said to me, Greg, we've got to bring this to more people. We've got to, we've got to do this. And so what we decided, we came up with a way of doing it, which was to offer presentations to schools um, and one-on-one -on -one ad hoc kind of support that wasn't required to be paid for by the family or even the school, we got third-party sponsors for it. So we started at a small school in Central Mass called St. Bernard's High School, and it's a small Catholic school in Central Mass, and a local bank sponsored it. And so these families started coming to these webinars on student loans or about any other financial topic that was relevant at the time. And we started answering questions, and then we started to get into hands of it. And then 
we saw some really great results. So then we brought it to more schools. We started to went to Lemonster High and we went to some other, more recently, some other Catholic high schools. And so we realized in order to really blow this up, we needed to make this a nonprofit. And which is something that goes to my passion, my friend that helped me to get a going passion. And so we filed our paperwork and we got our approval earlier this year. And so now we are raising money. We've raised money and we're going to be in eight schools. We also work with nonprofit organizations like Beacon Academy in Brookline. I'm sorry, in Boston, um, which is a great nonprofit that helps uh, inner city students. We work with Jewish Big Brothers Big Sisters out of Newton. We've worked with them for several years. So some of this activity really make a big difference for the students that need it the most. And it's nice to be able to provide this financial guidance that will save them thousands and thousands of dollars on college. It doesn't cost them a dime. Um, and be able to do it because of the generosity of philanthropists and businesses and family foundations and other other um, people that are are doing it. So we have a great board assembled of college you know, enrollment managers from colleges and former high school counselors and um, industry experts, as well as just great philanthropic people. And so we're we're bringing this to reality, and we're in we're going to be starting at Brookline High School in the fall and. Uh, and, and probably at least five or six different Catholic high schools um, in and around Eastern Massachusetts uh, in the upcoming year. So it's already started to get some some legs, and um, we've already got to see some really great results of you know be, students being able to avoid tens of thousands of dollars worth of debt, and which saves them even more than you know that donation that cost them maybe five hundred dollars, and I'm able to turn that into five thousand because they got more financial aid because they did some of the basic steps. Um, to be able to see that happen and students be able to go to schools that they wouldn't be able to otherwise go to or mm -hmm. avoid all the interest in that debt. Uh, it's a really neat model that we're just, we're just getting going on and it's, um, we're off and running with it. Which is amazing, especially because part of what we mentioned at the beginning of the show is that what you do really helps to bring equity into education and providing equal opportunities for all. And so it's horrible for someone to not be able to go to school simply because they can't afford it. And so being able to provide them with these this information and the support they need to therefore potentially get a lot of money in financial aid just by learning about it is huge. Yeah, to be able to have them be able to learn about it and get help, right? I mm. mean, the, the, the process is so complicated that if you, whether you're, I don't care who you are, right? You could be a, uh, the, the friend that I mentioned that I helped as his MBA, let alone if you were a, you know, first generation to America, uh, you know, maybe the parents don't speak the language. Maybe you're, you know, you just don't have experience with financial stuff, mm -hmm. right? Or that process is foreign to you. You're losing, you potentially could be losing out with a simple mistake on the financial aid form. And, right. and to be able to make it so that everybody has somebody on their side to educate them to this new part of their life um, that they haven't had to do before, that may not be their skill set, um, is, is nice to be able to do because the money is out there. $3.6 billion of financial of Pell Grant for low-income students didn't get used last year. Wow. People missed out on $3.6 billion worth of money for low-income families. Um, I think the number is like 50 million in Massachusetts of Pell Grant money didn't get taken just because people didn't know how to do the process or they assumed they weren't going to get financial aid. And so to be able to help those people um, changes the trajectory of potentially the tra trajectory of their lives uh, with, with it um, because they're able to get that education um, that they you know want to get. Absolutely. And so with the schools that you're partnering with and will be now partnering with as of the fall, what will exactly you be doing for their students? Is it that webinar process, like you mentioned, of just kind of teaching them about the process? Yeah, so there's there's multiple components of the program. There's the what we call our financial success series, which is web, a nine part webinar series that's timely and, and people can get recordings. So historically, high schools will offer a financial aid night and it's one night at one time a year. You may or may not be able to make it that night to the to the school, and there's just so much information. So we've broken that up into nine parts and spread it out, you know, nine hours worth of content. But then also we those people can call us and email us, so that everybody gets a one hour consultation, or they can email us with their questions about how do you fill the form out, or 
you know, which loan should I take? Um, and then there's also what we call our bridge to equity program, which some schools are engaging in. And that's for a lot of times for lower income students, they're able to get hands-on help. So we'll fill the forms out for them. We'll write appeal letters. We'll, we'll provide a much more robust level of service uh, for, for those students. Um, then we also do boot camps and workshops. Uh, we come to financial aid nights at schools to do presentations. Um, so different ways that we're doing it that schools can pick and choose based on the funding that they have um, and the size of the school that they're, that they're, they're going to. So it can be everything from very hands-on let us have your tax information. We'll keep it confidential. Um, it's all secure. We'll prepare everything for you mm. at no charge. And then that, they know they did it right and they did it on time. Um, and so it could be as detailed as that versus that high level education. But some people are self-doers. We also have self-help tools, so there's scholarship search tools and um, uh, loan calculators and um, uh, financial aid eligibility calculators that we have right on our website that, that's set up for these particular high schools and nonprofits. So Which is amazing a range that... of services from really high level, yeah. it, do it yourselfers to, I need somebody to really hold my hand for this. So there's a range of, range of services uh, that we can make available as part of the program. Yeah, which is amazing to have that A to Z option ultimately and guiding people through every step of the process. And so with that, how do you balance your time between college affordable and campus bound? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's a great question. And some days when I'm working <laughs> late, I, I ask myself that, right? How am I doing with that? You know, and I, I think it comes back down to team, both yeah. on both sides of it. There is a great organization that I have behind me that, um, you know, I feel very confident in that they can do it. So it doesn't come, you know, I think that for other business owners that are out there, you know, and you may have heard about this, but it's, it's hiring and training, it's management, mm -hmm. it's oversight, because you're replicating yourself by as many people as you have that are doing it, doing it well. And so, and there are people that have different skill sets that I don't have that I can bring on. So I'm very blessed to have a team on both the um, uh, college affordable side and the, the more mature, you know, campus bound side that I know that I trust with every single family that we're, we're dealing with. Um, and, and so that takes a lot of pressure off of me to do it. Um, I have to sometimes behave myself and say, Greg, don't check your email on vacation or, <laughs> or, 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 or put your nose in things that you, you shouldn't, but, that's that's on me. Um, but I know that um, the, the team and the, the collaboration that's happening, um, it, it, I know that my the, 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 out, the, 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 the end recipients of that, our clients are getting the advice and the support that they need. And it's, um, we have, you know, different mechanisms in place to make sure that everything is going well, quality control procedures and, um, and different mechanisms for that. But it's, um, I think one of the things about, especially the campus bound side, where it's been so many years we've been doing this, you kind of work out the bugs, you know, uh, you learn a lot yeah. the hard way. Uh, you can do all the business planning you can do and all that, but in over time and after every class, you realize, okay, this year we want to change things this way, or we want to, this is the changing environment, or this is where our employees need more support. You really learn. And if you have good people that are proactively thinking about that, it, it helps to take pressure off of the person that's you know, that's leading the effort uh, really is, is the case. I, people have said to me, you know, successful business owners have told me this for as long as from when I was doing my MBA, you know, it's, a, it's about the team and mm -hmm. uh, it's true. It's yeah. true that, you know, yeah. bringing the that's what I always think about is like, as one person, you only have so many hours in a day. So you physically hit a ceiling where you cannot take on more work or take on more projects or even do more if it's just you. But once you really expand those horizons and bring on people who you can trust, who, like you mentioned, might have different skills than you, can complement the skills that you have, can really do a lot to propel the organization forward. Yeah. And, and I think in a, in a business like mine, and you know, I'm sure accountants and lawyers and so forth that are hiring are in the same, same boat. It's, it's systems too, and, and systems and processes, you know, it's hard, you know, you got to hire people and there's been times over the years, it's harder or easier to do it, but to continue to look at the systems that you have, um, the, you know, making sure that the people have support 
um, the team has support, that they have the tools and resources, it's worth investing in um, right. and refining over and over and over again uh, because it's a constant learning, um, you know, as it, but as a, um, you, you try to do as much as you own, you're trying, especially when you're starting the business, you're trying to do it on a shoestring. And it took me a lot of years of, of doing that, right? Like I'm, I'm conditioned to be as efficient as I possibly, you know, to, 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 to you know, deal with scarcity. But what I realized over time is that as you realize you had a good idea and how to satisfy clients that other people can do it too. Mm-hmm. And, you know, yeah, you have to let go of the, the leash a little bit sometimes, but they're going to, it's going to maximize what you can do uh, much more. Um, and the, the business can grow more. And in my case, we get to help more people, uh, yeah. which is really, you know, it's the more that we're built for that, the more that students can make this process less scary and have more opportunities and families can save money on college and less fights can happen within families between students and parents. That is just typical for a 16 year old with their parents. And, um, <laughs> and certainly on the financial aid side, you know, the stress that, that you come when you see that there's just um, that scary bill is coming down the pipe. And then another one's going to come out the next semester, four months yep. later to be able to have, systems and team that can deliver the service well you need it otherwise you just you run out of steam you you run out of steam and you run out how much you can grow your business yeah you know i absolutely agree and speaking Uh, of the support that businesses receive what would you say are your favorite local businesses to support um, well, that's a good question. So, you know, I, uh, I mean, I live in Natick, um, our office is in Needham. So maybe I'll give a shout out to two of my favorite restaurants in those, those towns. Um, they're popular places, but they're worth the wait or worth getting the reservation. Uh, Sweet Basil's in Needham is a, is a great Italian place. Um, and then Buttercup in Natick, uh, two of my favorite restaurants. My family's all foodies and, um, and, uh, you know, I wasn't when I got married, but my, my wife's a foodie and, and my kids have taken that on. And so uh, <laughs> that's always a big night. When you get to go to one of those two restaurants, uh, you, you know, you're going to enjoy it. And it's a great environment and stuff like that. So shout out to those two places. People around those towns know them. But if you're in one of the surrounding towns, it's worth it's worth the drive. Good to know. Greg, this has been such an awesome episode, and I've loved having the opportunity to share more about Campus Bound and College Affordable with our listeners. And now I'd love if you could share where they can find you online in case they'd like to connect with you further. Of course, our website is uh, campusbound.com, C-A-M-P-U-S-B-O-U-N-D.com, and then all of the social media. Um, So uh, if you go to Facebook, Twitter, uh, you know, Instagram, uh, we do a great job posting on uh, uh, on those sites with re- relevant content. So I encourage you to, to, to follow us. Um, if you want to fill out our form on our website, we'll give a newsletter that goes every month that's got a great, uh, always great content. So uh, those, you know, in our web, our phone number is um, 781-274-8400. Um, and my email is gcohen at campusbound.com. And you can always get me at that or info at, and um, I'd be we're quick to respond with any questions, small or large, or if you just need a little bit of help with this process or you're take it away from me, I can't deal with my 16 year old. Um, <laughs> I know I, I farmed up my own two daughters to professionals on my team. So I don't have to deal with it. So just reach out and <laughs> thank you for the opportunity, Ashley. This has been, uh, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll link to those in the show notes so that way our listeners can click through and connect with you from there. But thanks so much again for coming on the show. Great. Great seeing you.